A highly anticipated moment, but it seemed the presidential candidate hadn't prepared for an obvious question. What would you do on day one in the White House? Well, there are a number of things. I will tell you, first and foremost, one of my highest priorities is to do what we can to support and strengthen the middle class. Kamala Harris also seemed tongue-tied on her shifting policy positions. I believe it is very important that we take seriously what we must do to guard against what is a clear crisis in terms of the climate. And to do that, we can do what we have accomplished thus far. She did have an answer ready for Donald Trump's claims that she's only recently embraced her identity as a black woman. Same old tired playbook. Next question, please. <laughs> It's common for candidates to do an interview with their new running mate after the convention. And Kamala Harris brought her VP candidate to her first sit down. The Minnesota governor appeared to agree he had misspoken when he said he had carried weapons in war. My wife, the English teacher, told me my grammar is not always correct. Kamala Harris appeared a little uncomfortable in this environment. And there was none of the joy on display that she and her running mate have sought to project in their nascent campaign. While she certainly ripped off the Band-Aid by sitting down for the interview, it won't ease the pressure on her to prove she really can shine without a teleprompter. Her opponent has already delivered his verdict. And she didn't look like a leader to me, I'll be honest. I don't see her negotiating with President Xi of China. Donald Trump and Kamala Harris will go head-to-head -head in less than two weeks' time in a debate. Both now know how fateful one of those can be. It's the next big test on the election calendar. Barbara Miller, ABC News, Washington.